Well, I ain't no cowboy. I don't wear no hat. I don't punch no cattle or put hot iron to ass. I'm no vaquero. I'm no top hand. I'm no John Wayne or the Marlboro Man. Cause I ain't no cowboy. Well, in that very lovely song, was performed by our very own Race, who's going to be at the Harvest Moon Festival next weekend. How's it going, Race? Hey, not too bad. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. So tell me a little bit about the song that you just sang for us. Yeah, that one's called No Cowboy. I wrote that one, gosh, a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago. You know, there's a million and one songs about people singing about being cowboys or cowboy this, cowboy that. And I wanted kind of a to poke fun at that idea not necessarily write an anti-cowboy song but you know more of a song for uh the not cowboys like myself and people yeah, who not don't talking do... about blue jeans and yeah. bud lights so kind of just poking fun at that trope of country music or music in general you know so i have a lot of fun with that one so you're going to be one of the local musicians that's going to be coming to Harvest Moon Festival. And just tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Well, originally I'm from Olney, Texas. That's up there, small little town, north central Texas. I always describe it to people that, that don't know where it's at. It's the halfway point between Dallas and Lubbock. It's three hours to either town on 114, you know, east-west. So uh, from just, you know, north central Texas, uh, Went to college, spent a few years up there at the University of Oklahoma, so, you know, boomer. And uh, after I graduated, decided to make my way back home, and, uh, you know, that's where the music kind of took its full full grip, is coming back here. So um, that's what I do, f- you know, full-time now. Pay and the bills, keep the lights on, picking strings now. So. And how long have you been singing? Man, uh, truly, I guess I was real little. I, I did bunch of singing in church like a lot of people in this area do and uh just never got rid of it I guess just kept going with it and didn't know until I was about 10 or 11 hey I don't know exactly what fashion or mode I want to do this in but I know I always want to perform in some fashion and of course coming up in the uh true renaissance revolution of Texas music and red dirt country kind of making its explosion in the early 2000s um that's all i heard on the radio and took a very quick love Mm -hmm. to that from a very young age and so this sound has always been kind of within me and then getting older and diving into the history and you know recognizing and using the influences of a lot of the older sounds of texas artists to come before me you know your jerry jeff walkers gary p nuns guy clark's um you know, the list goes on. And so, yeah, started writing when I was in college, been playing guitar for, you know, 10, 11 years now, and uh, started my freshman year just writing some songs down, nothing more than a, a kind of little bit of therapy, more than anything. It was mm-hmm. just a fun thing to do, but never thought it was going to be uh, something I ever did for real, for real, professionally. And, of course, the beautiful COVID-19 virus hits and closes down the world and everyone doesn't know what to do themselves so I'm sitting on a mountain of songs in lockdown and me and a buddy just decided to do something with all these songs I'd been writing for the past three and a half years up to that point and that's what we did we sat inside for that summer of 2020 and just recorded songs in his closet on a little old macbook and a walmart microphone and from there, it just kind of snowballed, and I got to the point where I was coming, driving back to Texas every weekend to play a little show here or there, and decided, well, I'm going to save myself a little bit of gas money and just move back home, hit the reset button, and see if we can't make music this full-time gig. Mm-hmm. And uh, and fast forward, and here we are. We've made it the full-time gig, you know, just yeah, and you've played in some pretty impressive places like Heiko Hall, now here in Granbury. Where else have you played? Man, I, I think the most prestigious and one of the luckier places I've been able to play is uh, we opened up, me and uh, the band uh, that I have now, we opened up for Larry Joe Taylor in Green Hall this summer uh, in early June. And that was that was an honor and a blast. It was so much fun. So hot, but 
well worth it and just a wealth of history you could feel in that place and it was just really an honor to be asked to go play there with Larry and uh, grace the floorboards of that place it's 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 a piece of Texas history and that's probably one of the cooler places we've been able to go and share our songs with and now one of the neatest places that you're going to be playing is here in Granbury for the Harvest Moon Festival. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's a, it's a new festival. Uh, I know it's new to a lot of folks, and uh, I think there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of buzz around it from what I've understood and what I hear people talk about. And um, I believe uh, Saturday morning of the 29th, I think that's right, 28th, 23rd, 28th, <laughs> one of the numbers. Yeah. Uh, every every time someone asks when my next gig is, I have to go immediately to my phone because I, I blank otherwise. But uh, the 28th, uh, Saturday morning at 1030, we'll go and kind of just do what you just saw saw me do right there, just share stories and songs and uh, maybe come drink a cup of coffee with me, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's have a good time with it. So I'm, I'm very, uh, uh, you know, it's my pleasure to be asked to come play. Granberry has always been good to me and a good town for music. So your show is going to be super relaxed, you know, nice for the family, and just mm-hmm. really chill thing. Yeah, it, it's definitely PG, you know. You know, we, we like <laughs> to have a good time and get a little, uh, you know, colorful with the stories we tell and the songs we sing, but it's all in good fun. So it's, it's I welcome all, you mm-hmm. know. I always uh, make the joke, but it's not really a joke. The race rickets is for the kids. So, you know, come one, come all, bring the crew. I gotcha. Well, folks, you guys are going to be able to see Race coming up next Saturday, the 28th, over here in Granbury for the Harvest Moon Festival. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to learn a little bit about more of the musicians that are going to be there and what it takes to just scrounging all these people together because it's two different stages of musicians. And thanks a lot, Race, for coming over. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, now I'm here with Teresa La Barbera, who was in charge of the um, booking the music for the Harvest Moon Festival. How are you doing, Teresa? I'm doing great. Thanks. I'm excited to be here talking about the music that we're going we're gonna to have at the Harvest Moon Festival. It's a great lineup. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Uh, sure. I'm actually a music executive. I, I work between New York, L.A. and Nashville, but I didn't want to raise my kids in cities. Yeah. So um, I live out at Pecan. So I live out in the country and love it. But I spend just about every week on a on a plane to one of those cities. But I um, I do what's called A and R, and I also manage artists. I uh, discover singers and groups, and I work with songwriters and producers and in the studio to help artists make their their records. Well songs mm-hmm. records you could tell how old i am because i still call them records <laughs> <laughs> so talking about you know it, finding new talent and all that what's the booking process to do harvest moon festival you know what i love harvest moon festival i i've been coming to the festival for for many many years it's it's you know it's had different a different life you know in certain years but i, I have so many fond memories of it because um they always bring together such a great group of artists, and I, I love to promote, you know, artists and buy art and give it as gifts. And so Harvest Moon has always been one of my favorite art festivals to attend. And when my dear friend Stacy asked me if I would help book the music, I was like, absolutely. I would love to really take the music to a bigger level this year because there's just so much support here mm-hmm. For live music, and that's that's what you need to create a healthy music scene. You have to have places for musicians and bands to play, and and a place for fans like us to go and see them and support them. And so, um, so yeah, it's it's been so much fun. Uh, luckily, I I started, you know, I just started going out and going to different places where live music people were performing Mm -hmm. and I was so pleasantly surprised to find out that this region is has such a healthy um healthy culture for these musicians and bands to perform at whether it's a a restaurant or a bar or um, a boutique I mean I've just literally been everywhere from Granbury to Bluffdale to Heiko to Glen Rose uh and all points in between 
and I've had so much fun. It's just been a, a joy, and I've just met so many wonderful musicians and songwriters and bands, and it was really easy, and it was a joy to do it because um, there's just such a great, healthy scene here, and I'm excited to bring that to the Harvest Moon Festival and to all the people that come, the folks of Granbury and the region, because the festival does draw people from around the region. Mm -hmm. um, and just be able to celebrate these musicians and all the great, great original music that they are performing. Um, we've also got a couple of bands from East Texas. Um, and uh, I think we've got uh, one, uh, two sisters that sing that are coming from Dripping Spring. So mm -hmm. we've spread out a little, a <laughs> little further, but for the most part, just about everybody's from the region. And like you said, Stacy asked you to make it, you know, a bigger music scene. And we're going to have two different stages, correct? Yes, yes. We've got two stages this year. Uh, we will have the full moon stage, which is the the main large stage. And then we've got the crescent moon stage, which is the opposite side of the square. Um, the way the Harvest Moon Festival is laid out is the artist booths are all all inside of the square around the courthouse and the stages are a caddy corner to that. And there will be music constantly playing. Um, the Crescent Moon stage are uh, shorter 20 minute sets while we are flipping the larger stage. So there will be music that is not, they won't be playing on top of each other, mm -hmm. but while, while one is breaking down, someone else will be performing. So just nonstop music. It's going to be nonstop. Uh, and Race Ricketts, who um, everyone saw sing, uh, is opening the festival for us on Saturday morning. So that's really exciting because it'll be a lovely, hopefully fall, crisp day, and everybody will want to come out. The festival opens at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. so the music will start at 1030. And we have a full lineup uh, starting with Race. Uh, we have Flat Five, um, another local duo, we have Holly Garrett, we have uh, the Mountain Natives, uh, we have Charlie Shafter, um, we also have on the Crescent Moon stage, um, Jackson Malone and Carrie Lick and Landon Hoffman and Billy Hartman. And then into the evening, we get into um, our Dancing Under the Moonlight, Moonlight concert, which is gonna kick off with Presley Hale and Nick Brumley, who are amazing. Um, everyone playing is amazing. And then the second band will be um, the Vintage Yell. And then Sunday, we start back up at 1030 in the morning with Gospel Mountain, which is a bluegrass gospel band from East Texas. They are great, beautiful mm -hmm. harmonies. And, and I mean, who doesn't love bluegrass gospel? So we are promoting um, for people to bring picnics or get uh, box lunches from the local restaurants. Each stage will have tables and chairs set out in front of it as well. So people can sit and enjoy the bands or they can bring their own chairs or stand. But uh, so we'll have the brunch going uh, from 10 to two. And then uh, after Gospel Mountain, we'll have Swope, who is another group from uh, East Texas. And then um, the Lockharts, which are two sisters with amazing harmonies from Dripping Springs. Um, gosh, I hope I haven't left anybody out, but there you go. <laughs> That's just a, a lot. lot of bands. A and lot of great music. If some of these people don't ring any bells for people, um, what type of music do they play? Uh, well, I would say that most of the... Um, most of the artists are, you know, performing all original music. Obviously, you know, they'll throw in some some favorites and covers, but um, these are all musicians and bands who are, you know, writing their own songs and, and making their own music. But I think they'll be, you know, they are singer-songwriters. They're some... I would say the genres are kind of a little, you know, kind of all over the, well, not all over the place, that's not really the right thing to say, but Americana, mm -hmm. a little country, a little um, uh, with the gospel on Sunday morning, just great music, you know, it's going to be really great music, and if anyone is interested uh, in checking out some of the links for the bands so they can, you know, s get a, a little preview of what they're going to hear, the Harvest Moon Festival website is a great place. They can go there. There's a complete music lineup. There's a schedule. Um, there are links with each artist that will take you to their socials. You can see their videos. You can hear their music. 
Um, but just really, really great. Um, I think people are going to really enjoy it because they're all great storytellers, all great songwriters, all beautiful voices, you know, great guitar players. So it's going to be going to be a really special weekend of music. It's going to be a fun time, guys. You guys really need to come out, support local artists here around Texas. And for the full list of all the artists that are going to be there, all the times that they're going to be there, and to learn a little bit about the event, you can always go to HarvestMoonFestival.com. The link's down below, and you guys can check it out. And, Teresa, thank you a lot for coming Thanks so and much, like Brian. helping us out. You bet. It was a joy. Thanks. I appreciate you helping us promote it. So everybody come out. Please tell all your friends, all your families. As Ray said, it's kid-friendly. We've got activities um, for everybody. So come on out and join us. Here I am with Stacy Watkins, who's the vice chair of the Harvest Moon Festival, and will tell us a little bit about all the artists that are going to be there. How's it going, Stacy? Oh, great. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about the Harvest Moon Festival and all the artists that are going to be there. Well, this is our 45th year, and it is going to be amazing. We have over 100 artists, and they are fine artists. They are juried in. So it's a it's a, a lengthy process that we go to. So they were handpicked. They will be all around the square, and we have art from painting to glass, all mediums. So there's something for everyone, and people really love to come out prior to Christmas, you know, buy Christmas mm -hmm. gifts. This is a, an event that people enjoy coming to our historical town for. It's a very well done event. The music is going to be over the top this year. And so we are, oh, and we have a wine stroll too. Oh, wine yes, stroll. Yes, and wine stroll. We have added that this year also. Yes, so you can enjoy wine while you're strolling in, looking at your beautiful, fine art, and, um, you know, just have an enjoy, enjoyable time. So. And you're also having an art auction, correct? Yes, we are auctioning off. Um, every year, the Art Alliance has an art or moon auction, Harvest Moon Auction. And what that is is in supports the Granbury Arts Alliance, who is an organization that um, helps out all um, organizations throughout Granbury that have anything to do with art and for common goals. So if they need sponsoring, we help them out with sponsoring. So we raise money for that. This year, a lot of the proceeds for our Celebrity Moon auction, auction that's going to be happening at, at 5 o'clock on the main stage on the 28th mm -hmm. is actually um, it's called the Celebrity Moon Auction. So we're celebrating the mayor, who is partnered up with James Spurlock. We're celebrating Judge Massengill, who is partnered up with Mike Tabor. Heather Cleveland, who also was um, instrumental in the Harvest Moon Festival years past, who now has ALS. So she is partnered up with Cynthia James. It will be auctioned off, and the proceeds for um, these moons will be going towards different charities such as Heather's Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, who did I miss? Tammy Dooley. How could I ever? The <laughs> How queen could you of, miss I Tammy know, Dooley? The queen of Granbury, our Visit Granbury queen. She is uh, partnered up with uh, Teresa Houston, and they will be auctioning off their moons with Steve Barry. So please do not miss that. We want everyone to come out and have a chance to be able to collect one of these moons. And then we also have... They will have a tent next to the stage, and this is just a sample of one of the moons that will be auctioned off. You won't have to, this will be a silent auction. Mm -hmm. So you'll get the entire festival to come and check on your moon of choice that you are, are trying to bid on and win. But this is just this, the uh, sample of the caliber of the moons that we have. They're just incredible. Very this is, beautiful. I know, this is Pam Tula. She actually shows in this gallery your private collection and has for many years. So she has many collectors. Now's your chance to be able to own one of T uh, Pam Tulis's art. Will oh. she also be there um, showing off some of her art? Uh, Pam Tulis actually is showing in this gallery. So you'll be able to see um, not only all the tents out around us, but our many businesses and galleries will be open at the same time as Harvest Moon. And many of them have demonstrations going on, such as this gallery will have... Um, uh, demonstrating artists painting and doing jewelry demonstrations so you'll get to see you know we're we're all encompassing art this weekend or the next weekend sorry 28th and 29th so yeah. and tell me a little bit about the um process to um choosing the artists because you guys said that you guys handpick all the artists they're juried in so these artists start they they do festivals and they go around a circuit but they start enrolling in january 
And then we have a, a time period that we um, start judging. So we have a panel of judges that actually judges, or we jury in the artist. So, yes. Let's see. Are we missing anything else? I don't think we're missing anything. So um, don't forget, let's see, we start at 1030 for race. We mm -hmm. want everyone to come out and see his amazing music. I mean, you heard his amazing music. I know. It was so amazing. <laughs> I loved it. And our lineup is incredible. 19 bands. 19 bands. A wine stroll. Amazing art. And um, we have a children's creations that is going on. So we did miss that. Um, children's creation is um, they explore all art mediums. Uh, Granbury, Th Granbury Theater this year will be hosting it. So... I think it's going to be over the top for these children to come out and just express themselves, learn a little bit about theater, learn a little bit about dance, painting, um, glass, you know. So Really? Yeah, glass? Some glass, medium, mosaic. So they'll get to explore in different art mediums that, you know, mm -hmm. they'll be in touch with their creativity. So it's always nice. to and, and, and parents really enjoy that when they're able to bring their kids out to have an experience, an adventure. So. And talking about other stuff that parents can enjoy, you were talking about a wine stroll? Yes, wine stroll. We have six wineries that are going to be out here. And, oh, we have food trucks to pair with them, Ooh, too. Ooh, yes, food yes, trucks. Yes, food okay. truck to pair with our wineries. Um, and there are regional wineries that are coming out. And so we'll be able to enjoy wine. Um, Brew is also going to be offering their beer. So we're selling beer this year, which is another uh, different uh, change that we're off, um, adding to the Harvest Moon this year. And we have wonderful food trucks. So, And then at 12 o'clock, actually I think it's 10 to 2, on Sunday we have a brunch. Oh, the gospel brunch. it's a brunch. gospel brunch, yes. And we'll have Mountain Gospel will be playing. And so um, you don't want to miss that. You'll be able to sit out, enjoy the music. So, Oh, and one more huge thing. This year, we have been finally, not finally, I shouldn't say finally, but it <laughs> has been a process. It's been a long process. Um, the Texas uh, Cultural Arts, mm -hmm. we're getting our designation. So, yes, yeah, so Texas wow. Art, the Texas Art Commission will be here to announce our designation. So, Granbury is now not only a music-friendly city, a the celebration capital, mm -hmm. but we are getting designated for a cultural arts district. And I remember Tammy was telling us a little bit about the process to become the cultural art district <laughs> and how much yeah. of a hassle it, it was. Is, it's really, um, yeah, there's a lot to go into that. And we've been trying to do this for seven years. And so um, this year we, we pulled it through. We are mm -hmm. very excited. We have a representative from the Texas uh, Commission of the Arts coming out to to give us our um, designation, and we're very excited about it. Will there be there'll be a lot of officials out um, as far as our uh, city council and commissioners? I think to come, you know, embrace this. And just so you guys know how big of a deal it is, I want to say only three other cities were nominated this year for the. Um there were thirteen cities that applied, and three actually two. Oh, I think, two. I, th I think it was just two that actually. Um, Got it this year. So it's a huge deal that Granberry is coming over. So come over here, join the celebration, you know, mad props to everything that you guys do to just make Granberry such a beautiful and nice place. Mm -hmm. And this Harvest Moon Festival, it's for everyone, isn't it? It is for everyone. I mean everyone. You will find something that you love and want to take it home, listen to music, have a glass of wine or beer, and eat some amazing food and also get to celebrate with us the 45th annual Harvest Moon Festival. And if we're missing any information, you can always go to their website at theharvestmoonfestival.com. That'll have the full list of music acts lined up, also just event times and all that. And Stacy, thank you for putting on this event. Thank you. We love it and we don't want to miss it. You'll have a wonderful time.